Hello everyone, welcome to the Leadership Lab. Today we have with us the very eminent Dr. Smita Naik. Dr. Smita Naik is working as professor and head of the Department of Pharmaceutics in Yalut Institute of Pharmacy, Kopalgahani. She has secured grants from industry as well as government, organized national and international seminars, organized guest lectures by industry experts and reviewed my new scripts for national and international journals. She has guided more than 20 MPharm students till date and has more than 50 publications to her credit. She is a member of a number of several professional bodies including IPA, MSP, CRSIC, APTI, IACP and SPDS. She also has 8 years of industrial experience with FDC Limited and Pyramal Healthcare. We welcome you ma'am. Good evening ma'am. Thank you so much for joining us in the Leadership Lab. It is an immense pleasure for us to get this opportunity to be able to get inspired from the experiences you have had in this field till date. So my first question to you is ma'am, in brief, what is pharmaceutics and your story behind choosing the subject? Thank you Arva for this opportunity to interact with uh, students on a virtual platform. I am uh, very excited to share my thought process with all of you. Your, uh, the first part of your question was, what is pharmaceutics? Now, this is a word which has been defined in standard textbooks using standard terminologies. And the classic uh, definition of it is that it is the science of dosage form design. But I would like to elaborate slightly more on it because pharmaceutics is now not just restricted to dosage form design. Rather, it is a process and an array of steps in procedures right from drug discovery, drug design, up to formulation development, formulation launch in the market, and till the time it goes into the hands of the patient, is consumed by the patient, acts upon the patient, and is eliminated from the body. This entire process, this cycle from birth to death is pharmaceutics. So I would say that pharmaceutics is like a tree with various branches, branches ranging from drug discovery, drug design, pre-formulation, analytical method development, pilot scale up, technology transfer, biopharmaceutics, pharmacokinetics, and everything comes under the umbrella of pharmaceutics. Pharmaceutics is no longer restricted to dosage form design. The entire gamut of operations coming under the tree are pharmaceuticals. Thank you, ma'am. The second, yes, welcome. Yeah. The second part of your question was, why? Why did I choose pharmaceuticals? I think that was your question, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, now, you as a student, when you go to any laboratory other than pharmaceuticals, when does your experiment end? When you show some reading to the teacher, when you show some chromatogram to your teacher, when you do some calculations, when you see under the microscope, right? But yeah. in pharmaceutics, your experiment ends when you have that tablet in your hand, that capsule in your hand, or that bottle of syrup, cream, or even that lipstick. So if you extrapolate this and think what you will be doing 10 years down the line, you are actually giving something to the patient. What you prepare is what the patient receives. And that thought excited me. That I am making something that is going to bring a change in the life of somebody, to the health of somebody. And I think that is how I developed an interest in pharmaceutics. I love to make formulations. So that is the answer to this part of your question. That's really great, ma'am. So what are the benefits of choosing a master's in pharmaceutics? And what are the job offers in it? Uh, can you please elaborate? Yes, uh, first of all, let me disillusion your uh, audience. There is no benefit to choosing master in pharmaceutics. You benefit only when you become a master of pharmaceutics. That is, you put in your efforts and you become an expert in the arena of pharmaceutics. Like I just explained to you in the, your first question, pharmaceutics is now not only dosage form design. You have regulatory affairs, you have patents, you have a technology transfer, pilot plant, scale up, and so many domains which are interconnected and which all boil down to pharmaceutics. So if you select pharmaceutics as your base and you do your master's in pharmaceutics, you are bound to come across or you are bound to be exposed to all these domains and then you can select 
the area of your choice the area of your liking and the area in which you want to excel further so pharmaceutics is very broad based it even includes topics of quality assurance quality control so once you are into pharmaceutics you get an exposure to all these various aspects of drug design formulation development and then you can go further in the specialization of your choice uh, the your second question was coming to job opportunities so the area that you specialize in is the area in which there is plenty of job opportunities i think in this last two years what has become obvious is that pharma is the field where there is no dearth of job opportunities even in these difficult times so we are in an area in an arena where we have job opportunities right from packaging uh, materials to formulations to excipients there are several of my students who have got very good career options in excipients then quality control quality assurance formulation development packaging technology is another field that has been ignored for very long but of late in the newer syllabus a couple of subjects and couple of topics have come so that is another interesting area where you can utilize your creativity to the maximum then you have quality assurance you are having formulation development conventional drug delivery systems novel drug delivery systems vaccines which are in the news right now so these are various areas and aspects where there is plenty of scope for students of pharmaceutics okay so my next question is ma'am how has been your switch from industry to academia okay see first i was in academia as a student from there i went to the industry so what we learn in academia in our four years of b farm and post graduation are the theoretical concepts that need that we need very much to build upon when we go to the industry what we do on a day to day basis is not we is nowhere related to what we have learned in theory so we make formulations we do the evaluation we do the testing whether it is dissolution testing or uh, analytical method development etc so we the whatever we have learned in b farm and n farm we build upon and we use that and we apply that knowledge in the industry okay so once i went to the industry and i worked in the industry for about 8 years i developed a lot of interest and knowledge about the practical aspects of application of theory okay post uh, my uh, industrial uh, tenure i decided to do my phd so that i could add value when i go to the academia and after doing my phd i joined the academics and i came back to those theoretical concepts which i had forgotten so there is a vast divide between the academia and the industry but the academia the academics is the base which you need and which you cannot skip and you have to be very very strong in these theoretical concepts so that you can succeed in the industry to give you one simple example the calculations you have to be very very strong in your calculations you have to be very very strong in your techniques of handling microscope or doing titration or potentiometry or even handling hplc which you can learn at your own pace speed and under the guidance of your teachers so that is the advantage of the academia and when you move on to industry these very same concepts have to be then applied worked upon and further improvised and improved uh, anna uh, what skills you think are uh, the most important for pharma candidate to sustain uh, in this competitive world the most important skill that a pharma candidate needs in today's day and age where a lot of activities have gone online is good communication skills okay communication as in written communication and oral communication why written communication the reason for this is that the entire pharma industry is sustained on documentation excellent documentation today if you want to market up manufacture a product and market a product you have to apply for licenses in various uh, to various regulatory agencies either in india or abroad this requires a good knowledge of documentation so excellent communication in the form of written uh, written documentation as well as orally because you are uh, supposed to make reports presentations you are supposed to meet people you are supposed to generate revenue for the company 
So one of the important aspects that a student should be aware is the communication part. Communi good communication skills, good documentation, and a consistent habit of reading and gathering new information. Pharma industry is changing very, very rapidly. What was applicable to 10 years back or 20 years back is no longer relevant today. There are newer skill sets that are required to survive sustain and thrive in the industry. Therefore, continuous upgradation of skills and lifelong learning is the second important aspect that a student should pay attention to. So I guess these are the most important skills that are required. No one in the industry expects you to mug up anything. Data is available to you. Textbooks are available to you. Rules and regulations are available to you. But you can put them to advantage only if you are in the habit of referring, reading, listening, understanding, and interpreting. So that is the answer to your question, Arva. Okay, so ma'am, how did you manage to cope up with the difficulties you faced in your life uh, regarding your career? Okay, uh, see, it is like this, Arva. Moment you say difficulties, the thought process becomes negative. So you should always, whenever you come across a situation that is difficult, you should say to yourself, this is a challenge and I will solve it or I will take it up and I will uh, see to it that I am able to overcome this challenge. Now, your question was, how did you manage to cope up with the difficulties? Like I told you, the moment you say, ah, this is a challenge, you ultimately get down to solving it every time. The moment you say it is a difficulty, you know, there's a negative mindset. Oh, how can I do this? So that is the one of the simplest ways that I have overcome so many challenges. I have broken down the challenge into many smaller bits. So if I have a very large problem, I break it down into five small problems and I solve one problem at a time. That makes it very much simple to understand and to solve. Okay. Lastly, ma'am, this is my last question to you. How would you define success and a piece of advice for our student audience? Success can be achieved by three means. Hard work, hard work, and hard work. There is no shortcut to success. I think we are all aware of this, that in order to succeed, we have to consistently, persistently perform to the best of our capacity and give much more than the company expects. The moment the organization where you are working understands that you are giving, you are performing to your full potential, the company takes notice of you and you get more opportunities coming your way and you get more things to learn. Always you have, the student has to show an eagerness to learn. Today, uh, to give you a small example, uh, when a student newly joins an organization, one of the first duties given to that student is to carry out weight variation, hardness and friability of camels. I'm sure many of you have undergone this. So the student feels, oh, what is this? I have done it for one day. I've done for 10 days. Now what? How much more? But remember, you're developing a skill set wherein you are able to understand the trend that the product is going through, whether it is a successful product, whether it is going to face problems. All this you will understand in due course. So any work given to you has to be done with due diligence and every small task teaches you something important. If you keep this in mind and keep doing all small tasks, ultimately the biggest task will one day come to you. The biggest, most important task that will give you credit will be given to you once the company trusts the organization or the boss trusts that this person is very, very diligent and is an interested learner. So that attitude has to be shown to the superiors. That was a brief uh, a brief uh, advice that I would like to give. Another important uh, uh, thing which I would like the students to know is that do not compare your situation with your peer or your batchmate. Oh, that fellow is getting a salary of rupees 15,000. I'm getting 14,500. So let me jump to that company. I am sorry, but that is the worst possible decision to take. Do not compare and do not change careers just for the sake of money. I think longevity in any organization gives you the necessary exposure to higher tasks over a period of time. 
and which makes you an expert in that particular area and you will definitely reap the benefits of this in the future so for short term benefits do not keep changing jobs look at the learning curve is are you getting plenty of opportunities to handle instruments are you able to get time to read newer magazines journals are you exposed to more seminars and conferences in your current job then stay where you are do not change for short term gains if you speak to any of the industrialists anybody pharma uh, fraternity who is at a higher post and see their cv you will see that they have not jumped every two years no that is that approach is not right learning should take precedence over short term gains long term goals will come on their own success will come on its own so arva that is the answer to your question thank you so much ma'am for giving us your precious time thanks to you guys for watching the leadership lab if you have any questions for our speakers or any suggestions for us you can contact us through gmail on farmacat.mumbai@gmail.com with the title the leadership lab we will try to send the questions to the speakers and get you your answers at the earliest students can join our telegram channel farmacat gpat voice and give a boost to your gpat preparations with the daily practice questions Also you can follow us on our Instagram and LinkedIn ID and for more updates details of which will be given to you in the description thanks for all your support keep watching thanks to pharmacad and the agonist magazine for this opportunity for interaction with the students i wish pharmacad and agonist all the best for the future thank you thank you, you ma'am